This is a reading from the Notebooks by Maria Voltorda, 1943, October the 4th, The First Night as an Orphan, footnote, see note 177. And this is where she describes the death of her mother. Jesus says, When there are two to bear an affliction, it is lighter. I am with you. To the world, this not leaving you at peace, even on this night of pain, may seem an act of cruelty. But let's allow the world to go on talking. I, it sees, judges, and speaks negatively. The truth is different. And this truth is also an irrefutable proof of who it is that is speaking to you. A proof for the numberless Thomases of this day who do not hear me and my voice in your pages. Only God, just and holy, in an hour of pain like this one, can have you write words like the ones you will write. Only God, and I am He. One of the things that most amazed the pagan world and made new and ever more numerous proselytes of the church was the calm, serenity, and fortitude of the martyrs during the hour of martyrdom. This unshakable, serene peace could come only from God. But the martyrdom of the heart is no less atrocious than that of the flesh, and only God can communicate to those tortured in their hearts the heroism of a resignation which is truly the fourth sentence in the Our Father, lived out with all one's flesh and soul, intellect and spirit. The blind world may also mistake your heroic calm, the gift, the gift of your all for indifference. The world dirties everything it comes close to, but the dirt does not penetrate into a block of gold or diamond. It remains on top and then falls at the slightest rush of rain or wind. So let the world's blind not see. The others, to whom my spirit is light, read my name in your courage in your courage and martyrdom, and you suffering with this courage are more of a missionary of your Jesus than a hundred preachers of words not confirmed by a deed. There is a parable of mine which I present to you in this hour. It is that of the sterile fig tree. Do not weep, Maria. You already know who I want to refer to. Do not weep. With your mother, I use the same care as would a vine keeper for the sluggish plant. Praise me for it, Maria, for I used infinite mercy towards the soul that was so dear to you. Her hour of judgment was long before now, and I came twice over the course of these years of pain of yours to observe this spiritual plant, which not even your praying led to produce fruits of eternal life, and both times the scythe was already in my hand to knock down that life which resisted the invitations of grace. And both times I held back the blow to provide the occasion for that soul not to come to me naked as regards good works performed with the soul reconciled with me. I am the merciful Jesus, and I had mercy on her and on you that were eating your heart out over her. I prepared the means for a final work. I sent a servant, footnote, Father Migliorini in the preceding days had given communion to Iside, who died at noon on October the 4th. I sent a servant of mine to accomplish the mystical fertilization of that soul through the sacrament, or, rather, the sacraments in which my blood flows, and my flesh becomes food to give you salvation, forgiveness, and eternal life. I did everything that could be done for that element to work the miracle of adorning that spirit on the verge of presenting itself to me with fruits, and you helped me. I took her now, because she could not yield more than that, and if I had left her longer, the gust of human sentiment with the heat of its resentments and forms of selfishness, would have burned the fruits provoked by my love and yours. She did not say thank you to you, but I say it for her, and now she is already saying it to you, for my light has illuminated horizons for her which her humanity concealed from her. Daughter, don't cry. The rest will come later. Go on praying and suffering for her, and hope in me. Go in peace, faithful soul. I do not abandon you. You are in my arms, which are sweeter than those of all mothers.